Hi guys, and welcome to every episode of The Simpsons Season 19 Reviewed. Unlike last season, which was very run-of-the-mill, I do actually have a few things to talk about in regards to the production of this season. For a start, there are only 20 episodes in this season, which is a few less than normal, and even several of those were holdovers from Season 18. Some of this was no doubt down to the work done on the movie, but there was also a Writers Guild of America strike that happened around this time as well, and that also affected production. So it was clearly a bit of a mess behind the scenes in 2007, so I am interested to find out if it affects the quality of the episodes at all. Before we find out, I would like, as ever, to thank The Simpsons Wiki for their brilliant information, and also a thank you to you guys who continue to watch this series. Now let's get into it, shall we? Season 19, Episode 1 he loves to fly and he does. Homer gets to fly in Mr. Burns private jet. After getting a taste for it, he wants to do it all the time. So he hires a life coach to assist him with that goal. So much of it is that this is of course the first episode to air after the release of the movie. And as such it has a unique opening referencing it. And my best moment here was the at least you tried cake that the family makes for Homer. So the season opener gets a 3 out of 5. I think the story here had a bit of potential, but it never really got close to fully fulfilling it. Homer trying to buck his ideas up after getting a life coach was decent. It was just nice to see him have a positive attitude for a change, even if it never lasted that long. The bits of him moping around in Krusty Burger after he failed to get his new job also did a nice job of showing what a mess he was in. The episode was a bit too fast paced for its own good though, and as such never really committed to the storyline. They ended up making it about him lying to Marge and trying to keep it a secret. This led to their private plane ride, which Homer had to try and land after the pilot became incapacitated. That was a bit over the top for The Simpsons at any time, but it felt especially jarring here, as this episode had not been a wacky farce at all. If anything, up until that point, they had been trying to treat it seriously. So yes, the unrealistic, out of place ending soured my opinion of this a bit. The jokes were solid though, which is why this still gets a free. I enjoyed the Lionel Richie guest appearance and how Homer has him sing about beer. The cake is a classic also and has spawned a ton of memes. And even though technically not a part of the episode, I did enjoy that intro sequence and how it referenced the movie. Season 19, Episode 2, The Homer of Seville. After an injury at a funeral, Homer finds out that he can sing very well while lying down. He decides to make some money out of this talent by joining an opera. So my trivia here is that the painting that Homer does is a parody of Michelangelo's The Creation of Adam. And my best moment here was the failed attempt to snipe Julia. I gave this one a 2 out of 5. So I will be open and say that I did not find this episode funny at all. So that is the main reason why I am giving this rating. I mean, we are treated to such gems as Lenny and Carl getting it on with some old women, Homer flirting with the waiter, and Marge and Homer bickering about nothing. Truly some painful moments here. In terms of the plot, it had its moments. I did like the absurdity of Homer being a good opera singer. It also gave Dan a good chance to show off his singing voice as Homer again. That being said though, you could tell that they were lacking content here, even with the long intro and couch gag. The actual conflict does not get started until over halfway through, where Homer has to deal with this crazy stalker lady. There was one good thing to come from that, which was the police's incompetent attempt to stop her from killing Homer. But other than that, it was mostly pay for last, and therefore I did not take it too seriously. I can imagine though that having to deal with a stalker in real life would be a horrible experience. That touch wood, I never have to suffer. I did kind of suffer during parts of this episode though, which is why it gets ranked as a low 2. Season 19, Episode 3, Midnight Towboy. Homer meets a tow truck driver and ends up buying a truck from him. However, he gets kidnapped after towing cars from outside of his area. So the title of this episode is a reference to the film Midnight Cowboy. And my best moment was Homer towing Arnie Pie's helicopter. This one is a 4 out of 5. Now I was a bit torn on that rating, as this was always going to be either a high 3 or a low 4 for me. In the end though, I did settle on a 4, because the plot was quite tight, and you could tell that the writers had a clear idea of what they wanted to do with it. Sure, it was another Homer gets a job storyline, but the way he stumbles into it feels authentic. 
and the tow guy he meets seems chill and friendly at first, but he is willing to hold people captive in his basement for towing in his area. The Maggie side plot was okay at first, with Marge learning to let her go a bit. We have seen that type of thing before though, it really hit its stride at the end, and regardless of how unrealistic it may be, I enjoyed Maggie and Santa's little helper going on a journey to save Homer. It is also good to give Maggie her time to shine, and the ending where she hugs Marge again was kind of sweet. The jokes here were a bit up and down, they did drag out a few for too long, and they also over explained them at times too. Look, we get it, Homer was crying over spilt milk, you don't need to spell it out to us. They did get some right though, like Homer's battle with Arnie Pie, Marge's incompetent browsing of the internet, and the way Homer ruthlessly tows Lenny's car. Season 19, Episode 4 I don't want to know why the caged bird sings. Marge is held hostage during a robbery. The perpetrator promises to give himself up if she visits him in prison, so she agrees. However, she soon gets cold feet about the idea. My trivia for this one is that Johnny Stabo's prison number in the movie is the same as the production code for this episode. J-A-B-F-1-9 And my best moment here was the Itchy and Scratchy cartoon. This one is a... 3 out of 5. The base plotline of Marge bonding with a prison inmate is nothing new. We saw it in the season 12 episode Pokemon. I think this episode does work slightly better than that one because Marge acts very in character here and she's nowhere near as gullible. Once she makes the promise to visit him, of course she would feel uneasy about doing it. However, unlike most people who would just lie and have no problem never going to visit, Marge actually feels guilty about it. So much so, that she literally wastes away her days doing things to try and justify to herself why she is not going. In the end, Dwight escapes from prison and tracks Marge down. Instead of killing her though, he just wants to have a day at the theme park, which he couldn't as a kid. Dwight was a decent character overall, played quite well. The ending could have been more impactful though, rather than him just jumping in the gears of the ride. There were a few funny moments here also. I liked how the police decided that Dwight's demand of taking care of one more thing were more than fair. As I said, I also liked the itchy and scratchy cartoon about steroids. It was just nice to see them again, as we don't seem to be getting much of them lately. Overall, much like the previous episode, this was towing the line between the three and the four. They both had solid plots with up and down jokes. The ending of this one was not quite as good as the ending of the last episode though, which ended up being the difference maker. Season 19 Episode 5, Treehouse of Horror 18. The three short stories this year are E.T. Go Home, Mr. and Mrs. Simpson, and Heck House. My trivia here is that this is the only Treehouse of Horror where Maggie does not appear at all in the episode. And my best moment was the fight between Homer and Marge. This year's Halloween episode is a 2 out of 5. This was a very disappointing one, so much so that it is the first Treehouse of Horror to get a 2. To be honest, at times, it did not even feel much like a Treehouse of Horror, which was part of the problem. You could tell that just based on how much of this episode took place inside the Simpsons house. The first segment involved Kodo, sure, but it felt like a normal episode which just happened to have him in. Half of the segment was just idle chit chat between him, Bart and Lisa. The ending was also bad. I found it a bit odd how the aliens were overpowered so easily and Homer suffocating Kodos with a pillow I could have done without. Mr. and Mrs. Simpson, while again having nothing to do with Halloween, was still probably the best of the three. I liked the reveal that Marge is an assassin as well as Homer, and the crazy fight they have with all the weapons is so over the top that it is somewhat entertaining. There was just a better sense of purpose to this segment than the others, which is why I liked it best. The final part had potential, with Ned reprising his role as the devil to teach the kids a lesson. Sadly though, it was done in a very formulaic way. There was no real ending to it either, it made the whole thing seem kind of pointless. At least there was one good joke. It was Homer saying, more bread please, after he was turned into spaghetti. Unfortunately though, the good moments here were in the minority, which leads me to say that this is the worst Treehouse of Horror so far. Season 19, Episode 6, Little Orphan Millie. When Kirk and Luan remarry and go on a honeymoon cruise, they fall into the sea and are presumed dead. This changes Millhouse's attitude and he becomes more popular as a result. My trivia here is that a dadjo for strings is played when the Coast Guards are driving towards the Simpsons house and that whole bit is a parody of a scene from Saving Private Ryan. 
my best moment was Mod Crumping. This one is a 3 out of 5. I mean, I did have my complaints about this episode, which I will get into, but it did at least have a mostly focused and coherent plotline. Sure, Kirk and Luan being lost at sea, only to predictably survive, was a very cliche and over-the-top way to add conflict to the plot. Still, I can mostly forgive it, as it paved the way for some good character stuff. Milhouse's transition into being this uncaring guy was quite believable here given all he went through, and unlike when this was tried in the season 15 episode, Milhouse doesn't live here anymore, this time it was actually expanded on. In a strange way, even though he was depressed, this was probably the freest Milhouse has ever been on the show, as he just put his emotions out there for all to see, and did not really care what anyone thought of him. I also liked the dynamic of how all the other kids were amazed by that, and started liking him even more. People in general, but kids especially, are very impressionable and want some kind of figure to follow, so it is very realistic how they would all change their opinion of him on a dime based on his behaviour. As I said though, it's not all good. I did have my annoyances here, which stopped this from being a 4. The ending was 1. It was just nonsense how the hot air balloon bumped into Kirk and Luan. The average of best jokes were another reason why I was not that entertained here. As I said, I did enjoy Marge's crumping. It is always good to see her awkward attempts to fit in with things like that. Other than that though, I was not really impressed overall with the jokes. The one about Kirk and Luan being brother and sister was so obvious. I'm surprised it took them this long to do it to be honest. Oh, and there was a little subplot about Homer forgetting Marge's eye colour or something. It was not great, but it gave them both something to do I guess. Season 19, Episode 7, Husbands and Knives. Marge forms a women-only gym, and Homer becomes worried about losing her after she becomes successful. Meanwhile, a new comic book shop opens in Springfield, putting comic book guy out of business. So my trivia here is that the song playing during Marge's business montage is Opportunities by the Pet Shop Boys. And the best thing about the episode for me was the new comic book store itself. So I gave this one a 2 out of 5. The best parts of this episode came early on. Act 1 of a new comic book store opening to replace comic book guy was quite fun. Jack Black, as to be expected, brought a lot of energy to his role as Milo, and it was nice to see the kids actually being able to enjoy themselves. The battle comic book guy had with the comic writers was also decent. It was just a very light-hearted plotline that I was having fun with. It is just a shame that he got completely abandoned after Act 1, and left with no conclusion. Instead, we had to get into the story about Marge opening a women's gym and becoming successful. And as you may have guessed from the rating, I did not like it. There were just numerous problems with it. To start off, they don't bother to show on screen how Marge made this gym so successful. So I frankly don't buy that she is a good enough businesswoman to turn this into an instant success. However, an even bigger problem was that it shifted into being yet another episode where Homer worries that Marge is too good for him. I mean, we have had this plotline so many times before, that I'm kind of sat here thinking to myself that surely Homer knows by now that Marge will not actually end up leaving him. The fact that he goes for all of these silly plastic surgeries just makes him look like an idiot. And not an idiot in a lovable way either, just an idiot in a desperate, lazy way. If that wasn't bad enough, the main plot also suffered from the same lack of conclusion than the comic book one. We never find out what happened to Marge's gym, and it is never mentioned again going forward. I just ended up frustrated at this episode, as it had a decent premise there ready to go, but instead it went in a tired direction and produced hardly any laughs along the way. Season 19, Episode 8, Funeral for a Fiend. Marge sees a commercial for a new barbecue rib restaurant, and the family decides to go there, but it turns out to be another trap by Sideshow Bob. So my trivia here is that at the funeral, Krusty the Clown plays the piano and sings the song Farewell Sideshow Bob. This was a parody of Elton John playing Candle in the Wind for Princess Diana at her funeral. And my best moment was Marge watching the TV. Now I know that sounds kind of boring, but I'll try to explain what I liked about it in a minute. Anyway, I gave this episode a 3 out of 5. So maybe I should like this more. But to me it felt like a very generic Sideshow Bob episode. It started out okay with the Simpsons watching Adless TV. I enjoyed the references thrown in there about various TV shows. Such as the audience cheering forever on Oprah. Also as I said I found it interesting how it was Marge that got hooked on it instead of Homer. 
Once we get the restaurant ad, and the reveal that it was a Sideshow Bob trap though, it loses me a little. I mean it was an absurd plan to begin with, and it only gets more unrealistic later on, as more and more layers to the charade are revealed. Look, I get that they are trying to do the formulaic Bob murder plot, but it's been done so many times by now, that the writers just seem to be trying to outdo themselves each time, with how extravagant it can be. It was not bad, don't get me wrong, we do get some of Bob's insane poses that are quite well done and well animated, and it is nice to see his family again. It just didn't work for me as a big, dramatic episode and conclusion, that's all. As far as the jokes go, they were okay. I like the Simpsons voices echoing in church as they were bad-mouthing Bob, and the revelation that Homer had been circling the funeral home for 10 minutes, while Lisa explained Bob's plan, I found funny. Overall, this is a run-of-the-mill Sideshow Bob episode which by definition had some good moments, it just ended up feeling a bit samey to me. Season 19, Episode 9, Eternal Moonshine of the Simpson Mind. Homer wakes up outdoors without any memory of the night before. When he arrives home, he finds everyone missing. With help from Mo and Professor Frink, Homer tries to remember what happened. So my trivia here is that the title is a reference to the 2004 movie, Eternal Moonshine of the Spotless Mind and my best moment was the montage of Homer's life flashing before his eyes. This one is a 5 out of 5. This is an episode which is well loved by the Simpsons community for all kinds of reasons, so I'll try to explain what it is about it that I like. It had a very unique plot that on first viewing does well to keep you guessing what is really going on. I think it was a wise move to see everything through Homer's perspective. You can always count on him to bring that energy to carry a story by himself. He is also very reflective here, as is shown by that great little montage about his life. It is kind of dark in a way, and hints that maybe subconsciously, he is not really that happy with his lifestyle. The little images that we see of past episodes also adds to this, and helps with the nostalgia factor. The ending was okay, as it did tie everything together well enough, but I still think it was on the safe side, and let's be honest, it did essentially amount to one massive exposition drop. Patty and Selma apparently being willing to murder Homer was also not a great look for them. In terms of the comedy, this was by no means one of the funniest episodes ever or anything, as there were a few gags that went on too long, as well as a few lame ones like Cruller World. There were still a number of good moments and jokes though sprinkled in, so I would say it was still probably above par for this era of the show. I liked the creation of the Forget Me Shot drink, and how Mo could not find a flattering place to pause the video on his face. My favourite joke of the episode though, was Homer realising that he could imagine a pizza at any time. Only instead of just giving himself a pizza, he imagines a phone to ring up and order one. I found that to be pretty darn funny and it is so Homer. In the end, this one only just scrapes a fight for me, due to the average ending and a few subpar gags. The story was just so interesting though, that it carried the day, and it ended up being one of the more memorable episodes of the show for me. Season 19, Episode 10 E. Pluribus Wiggum After Springfield becomes the site of the first presidential primary, the townspeople get sick of the candidates, so they plan to write in their own candidate, Ralph Wiggum. My trivia for this one is that while Homer is eating at the fast food restaurants, the song Hungry Like the Wolf by Duran Duran is playing, and my best moment here was Homer trying to get Mr. Burns to leave work. I gave this one a 3 out of 5. This was kind of rushed pacing wise. We spent all episode jumping from place to place, throwing in jabs at the media and politicians as we went. Then, the ending decided to give us a bit of a twist, with Ralph actually showing some self-awareness. As it turned out though, the real twist was that it went absolutely nowhere, as the episode ran out of time and ended on a Ralph for President campaign ad. In terms of the satire we got, it was alright, but it does feel somewhat similar to what previous episodes of the show have done. We usually get one fully politically focused episode every couple of seasons. Now as you all know, I'm not from America, but I assure you that the primary buzz and media attention as depicted in this episode is bang on the money. The point about how someone ridiculous can become president purely based on whipping up emotions and riding momentum is also on point. Now I know a lot of people drew comparisons to Donald Trump when he got elected to this kind of phenomenon, and although I agree that this does apply to him, it by no means only applies to him. You guys probably know my feelings on this stuff by now. I am the type of person who unironically thinks that it would be great banter if someone like Ralph did become president. 
That is how low my opinions of politicians and the powers that be actually are. As far as the comedy here goes, much like the plot, it had its ups and downs, but overall was decent. I liked the think tank gag and Homer eating all the food with Hungry Like the Wolf playing in the background. That montage worked for me just because I liked the song really. But my favourite bit of all was the hang glider nonsense with Mr Burns and this random employee and just how desperate Homer, Lenny and Carl were to get him away from Burns. Season 19, Episode 11, That 90s Show After Bart and Lisa discover Marge's diploma from university, Homer and Marge flash back to a dark point in their relationship when Marge fell in love with a university professor. So my trivia here is that the song played when Homer rips the leg off the Beanie Baby is Bittersweet Symphony by La Verve. And my best moment was Homer's band and their songs. This episode gets a 1 out of 5. Okay, so right out of the gate, I will say that the timeline problems this episode creates are a problem, but they are not the problem here. All Simpsons fans know that the writers play fast and loose with the fixed timeline, and they're certainly not scared of moving the year slightly as the series goes on. The problem here is that the movie is so great that it appears jarring. I mean, we are talking 10 to 20 years here. That changes the whole decade that Marge and Homer grew up in, and that is just a hard sell for long-term fans of the show who know these characters so well. In future flashback plots, they mostly go back to being vague about the year, and I think that is definitely the right call going forward. As I said though, the continuity issues were not even my main concern, and I could have forgiven them had the story actually been good. Sadly though, it was the opposite of good. I mean, what is interesting about Marge dumping Homer for this douchebag, stereotypical, pseudo-liberal professor? I mean, everyone was just unlikable all around. Because of that, I did not care about any of the characters, and I also didn't care about how they got back together, which they obviously did in the end. The episode wasn't funny at all either. I can't even recall many jokes attempted, outside of the obvious and lame 90s references, like Sonic and Laser Tag. The only somewhat decent thing here was Homer's band. The Nirvana-esque parody was fine, but it kind of says a lot when fine is the biggest compliment I can give an episode. Season 19, Episode 12 Love, Springfieldian style. On Valentine's Day, Homer and Marge get stuck in a tunnel of love. They decide to pass the time by telling love stories of three different couples. So the song playing during a Sex Pistols segment is Ever Fallen In Love With Someone You Shouldn't Have by The Buzzcocks. And my best moment was the parody of The Sex Pistols. This one is a 3 out of 5. As you guys may know by now, I don't usually like these trio story episodes that much. They rarely ever get above a 3, and are quite often a 2. This one though was probably one of the better ones so far, on the high end of a 3. All of the stories brought their own bit of intrigue to the table, and as such, none of them bored me. The first one was a fairly simple Bonnie and Clyde tale, which was fast paced and had a simple end. The best moment in it for me was Flanders only turning them in after he heard that they were unmarried. The second segment was also a simple parody of a Disney story, but the animation and character design really helped sell me on it. In fact, just seeing the characters as animals was worth the price of admission. I especially liked Patty and Selma as the cats. Also, you can never go wrong with jabs at Disney, can you? Which they provided with the goofy character. The final part was just about my favourite. I found it clever how they substituted chocolate in place of drugs and a tale of Sid Vicious was quite well told with Lisa and Nelson. It probably helps that I do know a bit about the Sex Pistols band. Even though they were before my time, they were a big part of British culture back in the day after all. The only thing which lets this part down a bit is the ending. There was no real conclusion, and it felt like the writers had run out of time. Season 19, Episode 13, Le Debarted. A cool new student named Donny arrives at Springfield Elementary. Bart tries to befriend him, but is soon left asking himself why Skinner is suddenly wise to all of his pranks. So my trivia here is that the title and plot of this episode reference the 2006 film The Departed. And the best thing here for me was just the general atmosphere that the episode had. So this one got a 4 out of 5 from me. Yeah, I quite enjoyed this one. It not only worked well as a parody of The Departed, it also managed to incorporate some solid character stuff. Bart was like his old prankster self for the most part, and it was fun to watch his battle with Skinner. 
Just because we are not used to seeing Skinner being two steps ahead of him. The character of Donny worked quite well, even if he is a one or He played the role of a rat quite well. Bart you also got the sense that he genuinely bonded with Bart, and it was hard for him to keep betraying him. That made the ending where he betrayed Skinner and Chalmers all the sweeter. As I said, the general tone and atmosphere throughout was great, with all of these shadow animations, and Willy getting involved in the plot, who turned out to be a rat himself. The only thing even slightly lacking was the jokes, which I did not find that funny. The small side plot of Home Again in a New Car was okay in that department though. In the end, this feels a bit like last season's episode, 24 Minutes. They were both good parodies and were of a similar standard as well. In terms of which episode out of the two I liked better, it's hard to say. This episode is better in terms of characterization and fitting the parody more naturally into the show. However, I feel like 24 Minutes was superior in terms of pure drama, as well as the action set pieces. They were both good though, and it gets me hopeful that the show continues to do episodes like this going forward. Season 19, Episode 14, Dial N for Nerder. After Bart plays a prank on Martin, he falls down a cliff and is presumed dead. Bart and Lisa try to keep their involvement secret, but their suspicious behaviour prompts Nelson to investigate. Meanwhile, Marge thinks that Homer is cheating on his diet. My trivia for this one is that the restaurant which Homer goes to, Pudding on the Ritz, is a pun on the song Pudding on the Ritz, written by Irving Berlin. And my best moment here was Homer cheating on Marge with a kebab. I gave this one a 4 out of 5. Intriguing would be the word that best sums up this episode. Admittedly, it would be hard not to be intriguing when both plots on show have a mystery slash undercover type element to them. They are mostly unrelated, but they do manage to connect them briefly with a scene in the living room. I thought both plots were fairly equal in quality, both being solid. The main one of the two was Bart and Lisa supposedly murdering Martin. They were both pretty well characterised. You can expect Bart to try and brush under the carpet, but equally, Lisa is the type of person to get paranoid about something as serious as this. Nelson as the detective was alright, and he did deliver a couple of funny lines to Martin after he found out he was still alive. The explanation of how he survived though was not that believable, which is a minor nitpick I would have with this story. The subplot was more simple, but I also enjoyed Homer cheating on his diet. I like how seriously it is taken, only to have it completely flipped with that ridiculous scene of Homer sneaking into the Sleep Easy Hotel with a kebab. The film guy saying, I've never said this before, but turn the camera off. That got a laugh out of me. Speaking of that guy, it was nice to see Marge see through him in the end and stand by Homer, even if it means that she will be made to look insane by his editing. Overall, I did enjoy this one quite a bit. It had engaging stories and even a few good moments, even without being incredibly funny. It came up just short of a 5 rating. Season 19, Episode 15, Smoke on the Daughter. Lisa gets recruited to a ballet academy after they reject Marge. Meanwhile, Homer and Bart try to stop raccoons from stealing their jerky. So my trivia here is that Lisa makes a reference to the Disney Channel TV series, The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, and my best moment was the ballet instructor. I gave this one a 3 out of 5. I felt this episode started out quite well, but it did seem to lose some steam as it went on. The Angelica Button scenes at the start were quite fun, and from there we quickly got into the main plot. It was quite focused at first, having Marge fail at ballet, only for Lisa to get involved instead. The whole bit about smoking was a bit unexpected, but it was successful at giving Lisa some real adversity to face. As it went on though, I found that it took a while to get to the point, which meant that by the time they tried to do the ending, it was all a bit rushed. Also, Lisa doing this big speech criticising ballet instead of cigarettes was not only silly, I could also see it coming from a mile away. The subplot was a fairly brief one, but it was okay. I liked how Homer came around to the raccoons, and they even found a way to connect it to the Lisa story. As far as the jokes here, the main problem was that for several of them, the punchline was far too obvious. For example, you had Homer eating the sleeping pill jerky instead of the raccoons, as well as his rant about how easy it is to get cigarettes in America. I did at least like the disguise that Homer gave the raccoon, and as I said, the mean, arrogant ballet teacher had a bit of charisma about him. Season 19, Episode 16, Papa Don't Leech. 
After seeing that Laureen Lumpkin is now homeless, Homer and Marge take her in. They soon reunite her with her long lost father and try to help relaunch her musical career. So much trivia here is that the dream scene where Homer suffocates Abe parodies the Sopranos episode Kennedy and Heidi in which Tony suffocates Christopher and the best thing here for me was just being able to find out what happened to Laureen. This one is a 3 out of 5. So I found this episode to be more intriguing than it was good. Bringing back Laureen was not a surprise really given how many one-off characters the show had recycled by this point. The actual plot had its fair share of flaws. One of them was that it jumped around all over the place. For example, we had a Homer dream sequence, a brief bit about Homer's relationship with Bart and Lisa, then the stuff with Laureen and her dad. It tried to touch on too much for one episode, and I feel it should have left those angles alone, and explored Laureen's predicament better. I am also a bit mixed on the song here. It's not great or anything, and some of the lyrics are forced, but it was still at least a bit catchy. As I said, finding out what had been going on with Laureen was the best part here. Her story is kind of sad, but I do try and explain why it happened for her that way, and how her problems with men all stem from her father abandoning her. I was also glad to see her get a happy ending. Well, it is happy compared to where she was at the start of the episode anyway. The parting shot by Marge felt kind of out of place though, as Laureen had been fine with her in this episode. I suppose you can't blame Marge though for having some pent up frustration with her. It's just a bit of a weird way to end the episode that's all. The jokes here are okay, not bad but not good. That kind of sums up this episode really. I know some fans of the show hate this episode quite a bit but it wasn't too bad in my opinion. Season 19, episode 17, Apocalypse Cow. Bart wins a contest with a cow, but realises it is going to be slaughtered. He saves it by giving it to one of Cletus's kids. But Cletus believes that is a token of marriage. So this episode's title is a reference to the film Apocalypse Now, and it would also go on to be the name of a Channel 4 documentary in the UK. My best moment here was Homer and Marge trying to get Maggie to eat spinach with sock puppets. This one is a 3 out of 5. The plot was solid for the most part, and all of the characters acted how they should. Seeing Bart bond with his cow is nice, and it is organic and believable enough that you do want Bart to succeed in saving him. As a side note, Bart does have a bit of a history with animals on this show now, doesn't he? The Mary stuff was okay, I'm not sure about Bart getting yet another girlfriend, but at least they never took it too seriously here, and the two did act like kids about the whole thing. The ending with Homer substituting for the cow and nearly getting slaughtered was a bit dark, but hey, you knew that he was obviously going to be fine in the end. That is about all for the story, it was solid enough, but also a bit predictable at times. The comedy here was decent. I liked Ralph's wooden horse that he has throughout the episode in the background. And as I said, Homer and Marge playing sock puppets with Maggie was kind of cute. I thought Homer was afraid of sock puppets though. The final line from Bart about finally having a cow was of course an obvious one for them to use, but it still fitted well in my opinion and was a nice way to close out the episode. Season 19, episode 18. Any given Sundance, Lisa makes a documentary about her family, and they get shown at the Sundance Film Festival. However, the other Simpson family members are unhappy about how they are portrayed in the film. So my trivia here is that Lisa's camcorder is labelled My Little Sony. This is obviously a reference to the company Sony, as well as My Little Pony. My best moment here was Principal Skinner and Superintendent Chalmers as film producers. This episode gets yet another 3 out of 5. Much like the last episode, the plot was fine, the characters were fine, but it just got a bit predictable as it went on. Centering an entire episode about independent films kind of reminds me of A Star Is Burns, and the sad Nelson film is very reminiscent of Barney's film from that episode. The conflict about Lisa's film making the family look bad was interesting on paper, but they never really went anywhere with it. Now I know that was kind of the point, they were trying to point out how fickle these film watchers are after all. I just feel like there was some good potential there for character moments that never really materialised. On the other hand though, Skinner and Chalmers were a riot here. I loved how they played off each other and managed to be successful in the end. That Charm Skin production logo they have is surprisingly cool for them. As far as the jokes go, they have a bit of a dark tone to them. You had the memorial plaque for the hamsters. Skinner and Chalmers lying unconscious in the snow, 
all of the Nelson stuff. The one which worked best for me was the death to Maggie from one of the audience members. And the glare that Maggie gives back is just the icing on a cake. Season 19, Episode 19, Mona Leaves Her. Homer is reunited with Mona, but is not willing to forgive her for leaving him as a child. When she suddenly dies, a guilt-ridden Homer attempts to fulfil her final wish. So my trivia here is that the song White Rabbit by Jefferson Airplane plays when a hemp purse is burning. And this song was also used in a previous Mona-related episode, Doe in the Wind. And the best thing about the episode for me was just Homer's emotional journey throughout. So this one gets a 4 out of 5. So first things first, it needs to be said that this episode was on a short side. It was quite slow moving and also had the long couch gag and a sequence of Homer and his mom at the end. I did not really find that to this episode's detriment though, as at its core it was simply a story about the loss of Homer's mother and how Homer is able to deal with it. I think the emotional side to this was quite well done to be fair. They did not try to overplay it or anything, but they did show how sad it made Homer and how desperate he was to do anything to cling on to his mother's memory. Of course, it was partly driven by his regret of not making up with her before she died. Because of this emotional journey that Homer was going on, it really made you root for him on his mission to scatter Mona's ashes on a mountain. The third act where the ashes stop the missile launch may be a bit silly for some people, but I think I kind of like the idea that even Mona's ashes made one final statement before leaving. The ending was also a nice touch, and it was definitely a good idea to leave the viewers on a warm memory of Homer and his mum. The humour here was also a little better than I was expecting given the plotline. Homer thinking that a DVD was a donut from the future and the phone call that Lenny makes to his mum were great. There were also a few good lines with Mr Burns, like dissing the missile guy's wife and the out of place conversation with Homer about leaving work early. I was just glad they found a way to include him as let's face it, the last Mona episode had to involve Burns in some way. All in all I found this to be an enjoyable episode which brought Mona's story to a close in a good and respectful way. Season 19, Episode 20, All About Lisa. Lisa becomes Krusty the Clown's newest assistant and steals his spotlight. She soon wins an award, but Sideshow Mel warns that her sudden fame is not all it is cracked up to be. A bit of information here is that the comic book Radioactive Man vs Muhammad Ali is a parody of the 1978 comic book Superman vs Muhammad Ali. And my best moment was Sideshow Mel as the narrator. So the season finale gets a 2 out of 5. And I do kind of feel bad about giving this rating, as I do see what the writers were trying to do. Sadly though, I just found this episode very boring. You guys know by now that I'm not a big Krusty fan anyway, and he took up too much screen time here. I feel that this episode should have been more about Lisa than him. Saying that though, even the Lisa story has its flaws. I mean, since when is Lisa a good comedic actor? I just don't buy that she suddenly becomes so successful with that role. Most of the upside here comes from Sideshow Mel. We all know that he is well suited as a narrator, given how good he is with exposition, and we even get to find out a bit more about his backstory too, which was pretty cool. The side plot here of Homer and Bart collecting coins was okay, but no more than that. I did at least enjoy the duel they had with Burns over the kiss in Lincoln's coin. Other than that though, the jokes were kind of the main problem here. They weren't that good. And if an episode fails to make me laugh, then I will tend to judge it harshly. If you found this episode funny, then I can see why you may like it more. But to me, it was not one I would be keen to watch again. So, that is another season in the books. But before we go, here is a summary of the season. The overall average score for this season was exactly 3. That is the first time we've had 3 bang on a dot. But again, it's kind of hovering around where a lot of these teen seasons have been, to be honest. My bottom 5 episodes go as follows. All About Lisa was 5. Trios of Horror 18 was at 4, Husbands and Knives was at 3, The Home of Seville was at 2, and that 90s show was the worst of the year. My top 5 was Midnight Toeboy at 5, Le Departed at 4, Mona Lisa at 3, Dial M for Nerder at 2, and Eternal Moonshine of the Simpson Mind at 1. So yeah, I did find this season to be pretty much absolutely bang average in terms of quality. I think it was slightly worse than last season, but not alarmingly so. In fact, if you dive a bit deeper into the individual ratings, you will find that half of the episodes here got a 3, and there were only 5 each of 4 or better and 2 or worse. That just confirms in my mind that this season did not excel to great heights, but also had quite a high floor compared to others from this era of the show. If ever there was a mess season, this would be it. 
This is kind of what the rating system is for really. 3 is basically meant to represent Mare, 4 or above is good, and obviously if you get into the 2s you're looking bad. As far as the themes present in this season, I think you can tell that this was the beginning of another transitional era of the show. The last one was probably around seasons 10 and 11. Since then, the overall style of the show has been quite similar. But not only is this season the last one before the show goes to HD, it also features a lot of the format changing episodes which I know become frequent in the HD era. However, it was bizarre in a way, as it never fully committed to that experiment. I mean sure, episodes like Dial in for Nerda, Eternal Moonshine and That Mighty Show are a bit different, but then you have ones like Funeral for a Fiend and I Don't Wanna Know Why the Cage Bird Sings. Those are very formulaic and have predictable plots, the type we have seen on the show time and time again. This is just an odd juxtaposition and is probably why I find this season a little weird to be honest. I guess the writers were just caught in two minds about what they wanted the show to be at this moment in time. As far as the characters go, they were a mixed bag. I don't think that we got to learn anything new about the main cast, which is becoming less surprising by the season now that we are 19 in. However, they try to bring back a few minor characters and give their stories a proper conclusion. The obvious examples of this are Mona Simpson and Doreen Lumpkin. I think it was a choice they succeeded in for the most part, as those episodes were some of the more intriguing of the run. That about wraps up my thoughts for this season, really. Next video it is finally time. I have to face the HD era in all its glory. Wish me luck in advance guys. Regardless of how I end up feeling about it though, I would appreciate it if you all stick around and continue to support this series fully HD era. I know a lot of people don't like it and it's not the most popular, but I'm sure I'll still find something to enjoy there. And you guys sticking around will give me more motivation to carry on. And I'll probably need all the motivation I can get, let's be real. That is it for this time though, so thank you all for watching and as always, take care.